Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. Here are the top 10 unsettling space discoveries that prove we are not alone, part two. Kicking off the list at number 10, Gliese 581G. Kicking this list off with an exoplanet hiding in the constellation Libra. Yeah, to all my fellow Libras out there, this one's for you. Happy early birthday. It was discovered back in 2010, but Gliese 581G, still to this day, its confirmation is hard to pinpoint. Yeah, the thing with exoplanets is that they're a little far away. They're a little hard to see out there. But somehow the fine minds over at the University of Puerto Rico at Arecibo calls Gliese 581 the top candidate for alien life. You heard it here, folks, there we go. It's only sitting 20 light years away from our very own sun and Gliese 581G is three times as large as Earth. So to all my Libras, bring a friend or two. Let's party it up, we got room. If you're a fan of New Year's parties, again, this is the planet for you. Every 30 days, we're counting down to a new year. So we don't have to wait too long to party. Off to a good start. Number nine, HD 85512B. This next planet's in HD, Chris, there we go. Put on your 3D glasses. Announced in 2011, alongside 50 other planets, Okay. HD 85512B was discovered by the High Accuracy Radial Velocity Planet Searcher Instrument, or to save you some breath, HARPS for short, over in Chile. Yeah, Chile's casually exploring 50 planets over there on their weekend, okay. It's wild how some of these discoveries happened so long ago, but we don't talk about them nearly enough. Again, same deal as the Gliese 581G, this planet too, it's three times the size of Earth. It's actually 3.5 times bigger. Yeah, as far as commutes go, it'll take some time to get there. Yeah, we're still, we're still working on that part. The HD planet hides around 35 light years away from us. This one you can find in the constellation Vela, AKA the snail. Is it truly habitable? Is there water on this planet? Well, that's to be determined. Our boy James Webb's gonna take a peek real soon. Number eight, Gliese 581E. Wait a minute, how many Gleeses are there? Is a single Gliese a goose? What's going on here? In typical part two fashion, I had to include Another Gliese. There's actually four of them in total. I'm not gonna do all four though. For more than four years, the HARP spectrograph attached to the ESO telescope in Chile, they were finding groundbreaking discoveries for four years straight. Astronomers found the lightest exoplanet so far to this day. The lightest planet, that's crazy. This one is quite small compared to others on this list. Gliese 581e is only twice the mass of our Earth, whereas the planet furthest out, Gliese 581d, orbits its star every 67 days while Gliese 581e completes its orbit every three days. You know what I mean? Yeah, having a birthday every three days? Oh, what a nightmare that would be. I'm never going to this planet. This, this one can stay off our radar. A little small Gliese, little Gliese. Number seven, carbon on Mars. It's one thing to have Elon Musk tweeting about going to Mars or whatever he's doing over there, buying Twitter, I guess. But when NASA talks about it, I get a weird feeling. You know, it's, it's, it's NASA, you know, they're old school. They're like, we may have found carbon 40 years ago. Yeah. That's just it, that's the tweet. In 2022, just back in January, NASA's Curiosity rover measured carbon signatures on Mars. This is huge. Paul Mahaffey, principal investigator of the sample analysis at Mars, he says, quote, we're finding things on Mars that are tantalizingly interesting, but we would really need to get more evidence to say that we've identified life, end quote. Okay, so we're close. It sounds like we're a little close, I don't know. Side note, imagine going on a Willy Wonka trip to Mars with Elon. Do we wanna go? Like, he's announcing all these trips to Mars. Mars. I don't want to do that. I can't even drive to Ottawa for four hours, let alone Mars for years. No way. I'm homesick already. Number six, Ryan Graves UFO sightings. I mentioned this a little bit back in part one, but I of course have to add more. Back in 2017, a $22 million defense program was put in place. It was called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Now its purpose was to study military encounters with UFOs. And at this point, Navy pilots were coming out with their own story. Their eyewitness account of seeing a UAP or a UFO if you're old school. Eventually, come 2019, senators felt the need to be briefed on these sightings. It was that serious. After a vote by the Senate Intelligence Committee in June 2020, it was agreed that UAP reports were now to get added to the Intelligence Authorization Act for 2021 and going forward. That's crazy. That's why more and more footage is coming out now every other week. You know what I mean? These incidents were filmed ages ago, but only now are they being released. It's kind of cool. According to the Times, 120 incidents were studied during this case. And it turns out the US military is not responsible responsible for any of the 120. If they happen to be advanced drones sent to spy on the military, it's kind of important to find out who sent them. Know what I mean? And recently, a former Navy pilot, Ryan Graves, he spoke out to 60 Minutes, and he explained that these UAPs would pop up during training exercises every day for at least a couple of years. He says, and I quote, 
If these were tactical jets from another country that were hanging out up there, it would be a massive issue. But because it looks slightly different, we're not willing to actually look at the problem in the face. We're happy to just ignore the fact that these are out there watching us train every day. That's a quote from Ryan Graves, real pilot. And these are goosebumps for me. Awesome, I'm terrified. Are aliens real? What are we doing, man? Like, let's move on before I faint. My gosh. Number five, Milky Way radio burst. On April 28th, 2020, two radio telescopes detected an intense pulse of radio waves, and they only lasted just a millisecond, but they left astronomers baffled. The reason for this is because this was the first time a fast radio burst had been detected this close to Earth. This signal was located only 30,000 light years from Earth, which places it in our Milky Way galaxy. That's pretty damn close. The Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment, or again, CHIME, if you want to save breath, they explained that the signal was so easy to pick up that CHIME wasn't even looking its direction and it still noticed the signal. It was loud and clear right in their peripheral vision. And another telescope, STARE-2, also saw it clear as day. Well, it looks like whatever the cause for the signal, someone or something, we saw it. So, now what? We found you. You can come out now. Number four, the Lorimer burst. This is a fast radio burst that was detected long ago. This was back in 2007, and it was named, of course, after the person who spotted it, Duncan Lorimer. Well, actually, it was discovered when Duncan assigned his student, David Narkovec, to look through archival data taken in 2001 by the Parks Radio Dish in Australia. That's when they noticed. After analyzing this data, it was found that there was a dispersed burst that occurred on July 24th, 2001. This burst was less than five milliseconds long and it was located just three degrees from the small megalenic cloud. It still isn't quite clear what caused said signal, but it's thought that perhaps it may have been a singular event, such as a supernova or an Avengers level threat. One of the two. Number three, light shifts. Back in 2015, a Penn State astronomer named Jason Wright explained that there were pretty erratic and spontaneous shifts in the light that was coming from a star that was newly discovered. Yeah, shifts in light, what's, uh, what's that about? This star sits about 1,280 light years away from Earth, and these shifts were very similar as if something was passing in front of our view of the star. Scientists weren't able to connect this to any exoplanets or meteors or anything like that, so in turn, Jason whipped up an interesting theory that's lived rent free in my head ever since. He stated that it's possible that the shifts are caused by massive objects passing in front of the star in a slow orbit, like an array of massive satellites or a structure, like the you know type of thing that would be produced by an intelligent and civilized life form. Or maybe it's an asteroid, one of the two. Either way, I'm scared, again. Number two, Mount Rainier. Not to be confused with Mount Chiliad, although there's definitely aliens there as well. Mount Rainier in Washington was bumping and buzzing back in 1947. Pilot Kenneth Arnold made the first modern report of a flying saucer, or a UAP. Apparently it was a flying egg, actually, that's what it looked like. Kenneth saw nine circular shaped objects flying in formation, the classic formation, and they were flying at twice the speed of sound. So the Idaho pilot told the Air Force and they laughed it off. They didn't believe him at all. He took this claim to his grave. Kenneth stood by what he saw until his death later in 1984. He said that he saw UAPs. He reached out to the Seattle Times in 1977, long before the movie Signs was made, and he said, I made my report because I thought it was my duty. It was the only proper and American thing to do. I saw what I saw. End quote. And also, end point. I'm, again, terrified. And finally, number one the lights. Okay, imagine you're driving home one night after a long shift at work, maybe you worked late and it's midnight. You're driving and you see a V formation, the classic formation in the sky made up of yellow and orange lights. Do you pull over? Do you assume you're just, you know, beyond exhausted and maybe this is all in your head? Cause that's what I would do. Back in 2001, on July 14th, drivers along the New Jersey Turnpike saw just that. It was a touch after midnight and cars legit pulled over and people got out to get a better look at what was in the sky. Everybody looked at this thing for around 15 minutes. It was just hovering over top of the Arthur Kill waterway right between Staten Island and New Jersey. Just floating there, just doing alien stuff. One eyewitness, Joe Mavasio, recalls the sighting as one of the most amazing most amazing, one of the most amazing things he had ever seen. And then just like that, the lights vanished. They faded out one by one in typical alien fashion. Daniel Tarrant of the Carteret Police Department recalls seeing this with his own eyes as well. It was 16 golden covered lights in a V formation. Aliens are fun and all, but keep your eyes on the roads, my friends, you know? I'm not looking at anything, aliens are not, 10 and two, we're getting home. That's it, seatbelts, I'm checking those mirrors. No aliens back there, we're good. Those are the top 10 unsettling space discoveries that prove we are not alone. Maybe I'll do a part three, I don't know. I'll pull the tinfoil hats out. We're getting dark and dirty for the next one. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. I'll see you next time, bye.